Okay, welcome everybody. It's lovely to see you all here today. Um, I'm going to introduce our speakers in a moment. Um, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to hear from them. Um, and we're going to then open up discussion. So we'll save some questions until later on. And we're recording the first part of this session. So it's very lovely uh, today to be joined by Jen Purcell, Professor of History at St. Michael's College, Vermont, Canada, and Lucy Curzon, Professor of Art History, Contemporary and Modern at the University of Alabama. We've done very well to be here today after flying in yesterday morning. So we're really appreciative to have them here for this session. And they're joined by Fiona Courage, uh, Deputy University Librarian at the University of Sussex here and Director of the Mass Observation Archive. And to kickstart, Fiona and Jen will be sharing their research on royalty for their upcoming book, Reflections on British Monarchy, Mass Observation and Royalty, 1937 to 2022. So I will hand over to Jen to kickstart the uh, session. Thank right. you. Lovely. Thank you for that, Kirsty. Um, so thank you everyone for showing up today and talking all things royalty. Um, we wanted to make this uh, a conversation uh, as much as we could today because so much of what we're doing this week, really, with Lucy and I and Fiona, um, are uh, we're being mass observers and spending some time. Uh, in towns and listening as best we can um, for overheards and so on uh, for another book project um, that will hopefully be in the vein of May the 12th, so from the 1937 coronation. So um, as Lucy and I um, sort of came off the airplane yesterday and have been <laughs> looking around and trying to get trying to get a vibe of what's going on in terms of coronation, We've spent some time in Lewis, which is where we're staying, which is close to Sussex um, and the keep, uh, just looking at decorations and commenting. And I think so much of what I'm doing is commenting as an American. Um, and I think maybe Lucy's commenting um, as or, or feeling um, the observation from the perspective of, of being a Canadian living in America. So um, we really wanted to get the, um, the sense of the room, really, of the Zoom room today and, and have some conversations about about coronation and about preparations for coronation and about um, uh, thoughts on your thoughts on coronation. But to get started, uh, I thought what we would do is just Fiona and I uh, chat a little bit about the book that we've just um, we've just finished. It's going into production with Bloomsbury Academic um, and our editor, um, Roger Markford, is uh, on on with us today. Um, so um, thank you, Roger, for joining. Um, we are very excited about this collection, Fiona um, and I are excited to have this collection come out, I think, it, hopefully at the end of the year or near the end of the year. Um, it spans, uh, as Kirsty said, it spans the 85 years of mass observations um, lifetime and for current lifetime, I guess it's going into the 86th year now. But um, uh, and we, I did the first, um, the first mass observation uh, up to 1955, and Fiona took care of the mass observation project. Um, so I thought what I would do is, Fiona, just to sort of get you to talk a little bit about your experience reading and and writing your section of of that book, um, just to talk a little bit about what you're thinking about with this coronation in terms of what you saw with the mass observation project writing and what you're thinking might you might see this weekend when we go to London and what you're expecting maybe mass observers to, to write about. I think what I'm expecting is um, sore feet and uh, a sense <laughs> of claustrophobia to be, to be frank. But, and I kind of hope that that's what, what we get because I'm really intrigued as to what the public response is going to be. And my reasoning for that is um, because of this, the span that I was doing from 1981 through to the Queen's uh, Platinum Jubilee, the way that people responded to royal events has really changed. I think it's quite dramatically changed. And it's really easy to be able to look at uh, the TV coverage and see all of the people in the mall and everything and think that, you know, the things haven't changed that much. But actually, the way that 
the population as a whole interact with events, I think is, is, is um, it's quite striking, that, that difference over 40 years. And although, unlike you, Jennifer, I didn't get two coronations to play with, and Rodri <laughs> very meanly said we actually had to hand in the, uh, the manuscript before we got to add this coronation on, which is why we're going for a second book, second volume for it. Um, I think uh, all of my experience is therefore based on largely royal weddings, um, events, scandals, um, jubilees, um, and in, indeed a funeral or two as well, but just concentrating on the, the happy events, so the weddings and the jubilees, which I suppose you can correlate to coronations. I thought what I found fascinating was the way that there was a sort of move from community celebration to individual interaction. And in 1981, you know, people were still having street parties. And indeed, sorry, I should say that I started mine in 1977 for the Silver Jubilee. I always forget that we've got the Silver Jubilee collection. But that clearly was, you know, very much the time for street parties that sort of haunting back to the 1953 coronation, the still very much on a high in terms of celebrating royalty at that point carries on in 1981 and then gradually you start to see this shift and this shift from people going out and using it as an opportunity to commune with neighbours through to most recently people sitting on a sofa on their own and um, texting their friends or a WhatsApp group in which they're sharing kind of like oh god look what, look what the guests are wearing look what the so it sort of goes from that communal thing either in a street party or indeed a communal gathering around a TV set to experience the royal event through to a much more sort of individualized um, commentary on it rather than an experience that takes them beyond the royal thing. So I think that's what I would comment on in terms of coronation is the, ex the way that people experience uh, a royal event seems to have changed in that time. And that's before we even get to whether people are more Republican than they were previously. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but how about you? You know, with your two coronations under your bat under your belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get a little bit of gray in my hair. I've been around for quite a while. Um, so, you know, it's really fascinating that you say that about the the way that people experience the royal events and how that might have changed over time. Because I've been thinking about this for a while too, and the reason why I've been thinking about it's more specifically in terms of social media and. Um, how people might have been experiencing royal events more recently, so, sort of dovetailing with the, what you're doing, is I read through, for our book, I read through the responses to the Queen's death. And one of the responses that was in that collection was really fascinating to me because I took it as a, an experience, the way that this mass observer had written about his day and about experiencing the Queen's death. Um, he talked about going to McDonald's and um, seeing the queen, queen's um, portrait uh, at the kiosk there. And that's how I read it um, because it sounded like that's what they were talking about. And um, I went to find that image and online and I found out that that image was a meme. And so, and that's, that's me being a researcher that's removed somewhat being an American and not sort of being um, immersed in the culture. Um, and what I learned is that this whole experience of social media is really um, something that's happening in a much different way than probably happened in 37 and 53, right? Where there's a lot that's, there's a lot of images and there's a lot of conversations and a lot of, um, uh, sometimes mockery, um, maybe a lot of mockery going on on social media, um, and a lot of excitement going on on social media too. And people are filtering that, I think, in different ways than they did in 37 and, and 53. Um, and so I'm still trying to make sense of that and, and make sense of what these um, alternate sort of publics that, that there's more and more of these publics that exist, I think. Um, now uh, than they did in 37 and 53. But that said, I think um, some, of the, some of the more critical social media that I've seen recently, I've also found in the 37 and, and 53 material, particularly in the 37, because I remember, and this is in the May the 12th book, so some, some people may know about this already, but there's, there's one observer who is listening to the coronation with her friends 
And they're just taking the mickey out of the whole thing. And they're reading like the Communist Manifesto and they're doing all this other kind of stuff. And they're really just mocking the entire, um, the entire coronation. And so, um, so I think it's just the degree of the public nature of alternate publics um, and, and, and maybe the amount and um, not only the amount that might be there, but also the, um, uh, the multiplicity of publics um, that, that maybe um, uh, we're seeing now. So I'm still trying to get that measure of what's the, what's the difference between those earlier, earlier coronations and um, and now, um, and I'm also curious to see. There, there seemed in '53 to be a, a lead up to the coronation in which people were very excited um, and talking about um, in March and April for mass observation, talking about um, seeing all the decorations and actually not being able to pull themselves away, even though they wanted to be. They couldn't get out of the coronation fever. And I'm not seeing that, and I'm not hearing it. I mean, certainly when I when I've talked to you, Fiona, it's there hasn't been a whole lot of there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of excitement about coronation. And with Lucy and I going through Lewis, and you know, just like literally, we were off the plane yesterday, uh, yesterday morning. So I'm not sure we can say very much about it at this stage in the game. But just um, our expectation or my expectation, I won't talk for you, Lucy. Maybe you can chat a little bit about this, but. My expectation is I was expecting to see a lot more than I've I've seen. Like for instance, getting off at the airport, I would have expected to see Charles and Camilla like greeting me at the airport. And there's nothing. And in fact, there's still a beef eater with um, E2R out there as well. And I just that, that those kinds of images, I feel I'm trying to I'm trying to make sense of those right now because maybe it is expected and necessary for Elizabeth's you know, ETR and the beef eater to still be there because of that history and also, you know, uh, her presence for so long. But I find it jarring that there's no Charles and Camilla in, in that space. So that's, I'll, I'll leave it at that because I really want to hear, I want to hear from Lucy, uh, maybe if, if you want to talk a little bit about those, ex, you know, what you've seen so far and, and what you're expecting. And I'd love to open it up to hear what other people think about um, about this moment in time. I think I might start with sort of talking, um, we're working on a second volume, um, as Fiona indicated, uh, that focuses on this coronation. And we've been sort of busily trying to put together what this is going to look like and trying to attract people to speak to the issue of coronation. Um, we had a very interesting experience in sending out requests for short reflections um, and the number of people who then sent us messages back to say, well, I, I don't know anything about royalty and I don't know anything about monarchy, so I can't possibly write for this. Um, and yet our intention was to get something that was much more wide ranging. Um, and a lot of people, or at least started to start thinking about, well, I can't write anything positive um, about this or, it, is it all right to show my complete indifference to this? And of course, our response was absolutely that we were not looking for something that was about monarchy in the sense that I understand the history or I understand the, the pageantry of this. We were looking actually more for, um, you know, people's sense about the day, if they wanted to keep a day diary, sort of in a very traditional mass observation sense, but also about mood and feeling and wanting to do the shopping instead of you know, having to participate in this. So I I think, you know, in terms of the lead up to that, it was much more getting a, a sense of, um, uh, of, of what people were thinking. Um, and thankfully Nick is here with us today and I got his response within the thir first 30 <laughs> minutes of, of responding. And he answered exactly as I would have wanted everybody to answer in which he said, and I hope this is all right that I share this, Nick, but, um, uh, that what was going to be a, a very unpleasant day, writing about something or a thousand words on my experiences of the coronation was actually going to be the most pleasant part. Of the day. <laughs> so, um, but I think I think when we, um, you know, we, I've sort of started and I've been talking um, to Jen about this a great deal about thinking about my sort of engagement with monarchy and, and royalty coming from a Canadian family of my parents are sort of more or less first generation Canadians. Um, 
uh, all of them coming um, from England specifically, and thinking about the ways in which royalty played a very significant role in my upbringing, um, and all of the, you know, the usual knickknacks that you have around the house in terms of my father collect, uh, collected all of the commemorative mugs that had come out, and he even went into sort of looking for, um, even going to antique stores and getting, you know, the, 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 types of, of pottery that were uh, commemorative uh, from events that were long before his time, uh, or at least slightly before his time. He was born in 1931. Um, and thinking about the ways in which, you know, we were taught table manners as a child and that, uh, that our table manners were meant to be, you know, if you were ever having dinner with the queen, that these would be the table manners that you would have. So um, it has, it, you know, it has very re di different resonances being as a Canadian. And I, I wondered at my own sense of it and that I'm not, I'm more looking forward to um, other people's, looking at other people's responses and thinking about my own responses. Um, because I was, again, I was talking to Jen about this. I do recall I was, I was here when the queen died and thinking, you know, that I was enormously sad about it, but I wasn't really enormously sad that she was dead so much as I was about an era that was gone. Um, and that um, my father suffers from dementia. And so he, the, the, his connection to royalty and that was sort of like a, a thing that now I had lost and it was a, a great sense of grief because he can't remember it but I could and now she was gone so there's a whole lot of complexity of feeling that goes in with that um and then I was going to sort of link to my mom is also you know I, I have all of her scrapbooks from when she was um young growing up in Ottawa Ontario and cutting out um, photographs she has them from 1953 from the, the Canadian press looking at um, the coronation and all of the things that she kept and um, every time she had these sort of little souvenir magazines that she would purchase and they're just boxes of it in my parents basement and it's an absolute treasure trove right now for me um, to look at it but she said to me you know I might not even watch it I might just watch it on delay which was to me when I could then got off the plane and so there's nothing here and it's like if my mom is going to watch it on delay she's not going to bother getting up then it might be like that there's just this sort of sense of I'm not sure you know what has changed or whatever it happens to be but that um, you know I, I'm not sure that I was expecting the same degree of fanfare um, in, in getting off the airplane. And certainly when we went for a walk through Lewis yesterday um, and we started taking photographs of, we got all Humphrey Spender um, and started taking photographs of shop windows. It was really interesting to see what, and the, the majority of this, is what I, I, I'm sure it's, there is a connection, but the majority of shops that actually did have a coronation display were charity shops um, of all things uh, and the undertaker. <laughs> which I'm sure that there's an entire, um, you know, reflection there in terms of, of what we're, we're, we're thinking about in terms of what this means to people. Um, and they're in the juxtaposition of some of it the, is some of the, um, some of the mugs that um, are really hilarious mugs um, next to like, there's, should I, I so there's this, <laughs> In the you go ahead, Joe and Lewis. There's a collection of Barbie mugs um, with various different. I don't know if anybody has seen these mugs or if it's just to the store, but they're all Barbie, and there's different kinds of sayings on it. And one of them is um, something about um, she she looked like she didn't give a fuck about things, um, but it wasn't but, a performance. But it wasn't a performance. And it's right underneath all the coronation, you know, and so it's that juxtaposition of this sort of moment, this national moment, and you know, the gravitas maybe of it. Um, and then this um, really sort of jostling uh, in that space, I think. And all of the shop windows had that, like there's always something else going on in these shop windows, which in 53 people wrote about, and they didn't like it because they thought that there shouldn't, it should be entirely coronation. And anything else that's sort of present in that space takes away from the space. And so I've been, I've been um, kind of keeping my eye on that. But I will say one of the other things to wrap up what what Lucy was saying about what her how her mom is going to um, experience this moment. That's the other thing that I'm fascinated by because in 37 and 53, you you were on um, at the moment of the coronation procession at the moment of. Um, you know, the service in, in uh, Westminster Abbey and all of that. And if you, and if you weren't, 
the only other moment that you would be able to hook up with that is with the newsreel at the end of the night mm -hmm. and maybe through maybe through the week as they played the newsreel overnight but for for us now we can dip in when we want to come out when we don't we can you know if there's something on the news and we're really interested to see what happened there we'll just log in and see that and just get that mm -hmm. so the sense of moment seems maybe less now and that's the other that's my other um interest at, the, at right now is to see how people are going to experience it will they experience it as a moment um whether it's a moment of of anger, um, which, you know, a lot of people are angry at this, which you all know, angry at this moment, uh, this, the, the very costly nature of coronation, um, as the economy is in such dire straits, and people are having such rough times now. Um, I know a lot of people are angry, but there's also, a, you know, some celebration that's going on in memories, too, of, of prior uh, coronations, and also of um, Elizabeth's, uh, Queen Elizabeth's time as well. Um, Fiona, did you want to add anything or should we, should we open it up? Should we talk about what mass observation is doing? Um, I want to add one thing before we do that, which is actually, I think around what you were saying there about do Royal events, um, provide a sort of, a, a temperature gauge for society's well-being or feeling of well-being. Um, because the, the one that really stands out for me is in 2011, there was, um, William and Kate got married. And I think it was, to me, it was a bit of a surprise how much that sort of seemed to capture the zeitgeist. Um, and I remember walking through London and seeing more kind of Union Jack flags and everything than I had for a while. But then realizing that it was sort of followed by the Olympics and it was followed by the Diamond Jubilee and it was at a time of relative prosperity for the country as well and I do wonder if that that sort of that that feel goodness is what contributed totally towards that event being something that could be shared um the, the other comment I wanted to make actually is to go way back to your social media. You were talking about social media. And that's one of the things that really, really, I think, starts to increase as time goes on is people reporting their interaction with social media. And it's one of the things I'm going to be fascinated to see in terms of the, the responses that, you know, Kirsty is going to be telling us about the sorts of things that mass observation is going to be asking. But I think that social media enables people to join this wider community of disrespect or anger, or, uh, you know, to sort of share it in the way that those those women had to be on their own in 1953 to have the mickey taking and the sort of, you know, the reading of the Communist Manifesto, whereas actually people now can be watching it. There's a really lovely clip, um, clip an extract that I, I found of somebody watching, um, uh, I think, I, I can't remember, I think it might have been the wedding of um, Harry and Meghan, and they're actually providing a running commentary via this wonderful spoof account for the Queen that was called Gin O'Clock, not Gin O'Clock, you know, it was Queen.org or whatever. And it was always Gin O'Clock for her. And I followed that for a very long time. But there is this wonderful kind of disrespect that's actually a really friendly disrespect, though. It's sort of seeing the, you know, the, the late Queen as this sort of quite cuddly character that likes to take the mickey out of things as well and a bit like the spitting image years where um the the characters become caricatures and actually it's the caricatures that people are warming to mm -hmm. but I think actually yes you know moving on to Kirsty about what what's happening with mass observation uh for those not coming to London to be a mobile <laughs> squad <laughs> on the streets not going to take that as a pointed <laughs> the offer was open the offer was open for us all uh yeah it's um we we oh well, i'll hand over to suzanne in a moment who will share um what we're doing as an open call but for the panel our regular um panel of self-selecting writers we sent out our latest directive which was our spring directive just before easter so timing wise it was a little bit in advance so what we've asked the panel is a part three of the directive and we asked them to to share their thoughts on um 
what they thought of the occasion, uh, what they were planning to do. So it's not going to be from the panel's perspective. Some may hand it in later and write more diaries. But due to the timing, we're basically asking in advance, what were pe what are people thinking? How are they feeling about it? How do they plan to engage or not engage in the celebration? Um, so we're asking people if they're taking part in anything, if they're organizing anything, and to keep an eye out, to observe what's happening in their locality. And this leads on to what Suzanne's going to talk about, but we're hoping to build up a more of a geographical picture which we you know we always get from our directives um the insights to what's happening in people's localities and i think it'll be really interesting to see what's coming out in sort of urban and rural areas and smaller villages and communities and schools and as we were talking just before we came on we we're talking about our colleague jessica's daughter in 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 brownies and guides but where you've got community groups and organizations being quite active what what's happening there um and yeah it's it's really interesting just going from what we've been saying I was thinking about my children's activities aren't stopping over the weekend so there isn't a um there's sort of a mixed thing going on you know three houses on our street have got bunting so kind of I'm observing that uh so we're asking in advance really what's what's going on we're already starting to get some responses back but I think we may have some being held up and some doing some some diaries as well so uh but again as with mass observation you get those honest accounts by where people aren't participating they aren't engaging and they're going to be actively sharing their their feelings about that and that then that's where there's a lot of power in what we're what we're going to have um so Suzanne did you want to say a little bit about our more about open call to those not regular volunteers yes so last year we were eagerly awaiting the the date of the coronation being announced and we were kind of fingers crossed hoping it was going to be the 12th of May because that would have been incredibly <laughs> convenient for us to be able to do our open call as we always do um, but lo and behold, they chose the 6th of May, which then left us with a bit of dilemma, because obviously in the tradition of mass observation, we want to ensure that we continue to capture um, all rural events where we can. Um, but obviously, we, we don't want to not do 12th of May, and that's sort of coming up quite soon. So we also wanted to define the call um, for the coronation as something quite distinct from 12th of May. Um, so rather than asking people to do a sort of a day diary type approach, we're asking for an account of the coronation, but also the events before and after. So over the whole sort of bank holiday weekend, as it were, but also any plans, as Kirsty mentioned, you know, that they've had going on before. But what we've asked people to do is to recall what's happening in their locality. So what we're hoping for is that we will get uh, responses from people who are either involved or not involved. We have also emphasised that we're really keen to hear from people who aren't participating or interested in the coronation in any respect as well, because we want to make sure we get that kind of diversity of of, of, of sort of feelings uh, coming through the responses. But what we're really hoping for is to be able to put together this sort of patchwork, as Curtis Curtis said, of, of, of the country, to see what's going on in what locations, how people are feeling about the coronation, what activities they're involved in, what they're not involved in, what their views are. So hopefully this will sort of differentiate accounts so we won't just get lots of people necessarily just watching it on TV if they are watching it, but they'll be telling us what's actually happening outside their window or in their street or on their high street. Um, and I know that, you know, we've sent out, um, we've got packs available on our on our website for people to download. We've sent out information to schools, libraries, prisons, community groups, um, and certainly through our social media strands as well. Um, and we've had some really interesting responses so far. Um, I know that the, um, the prisoners at Maidstone Prison will be participating this year. And I also know that the good people of Atherstone in Warwickshire at the library will be participating because their librarians are holding an open day specifically so people can come in and share their mass persuasion accounts because she said she felt it was very important that the, the voices of people in Atherstone were, were recorded in our archives. So um, there's two little pockets for us already, but if we can kind of join the gaps <laughs> um, and hopefully the call will spread far and wide, I'm hoping that we will have some interesting responses. And like most of mass persuasion's material on royalty or other events, there will be that diversity of, of thought and feeling across the board and hopefully a real age range as well and people can also write and draw and photograph their responses so people don't necessarily have to just write either so hopefully that will make the opportunity more and more inclusive as well um but that's what we're up to um so hopefully people will will join in wonderful well I think we're all um 
I, I think when we put together the book that Lucy was talking about, all of that is going to be encompassed in the book, as well as uh, our our trip to to London. Um, <laughs> it's two three introverts going into <laughs> the belly of the beast, um, and it's all for science uh, or at least for observation. <laughs> But, um, you know, and I think, you know, the plan was to, on some level, um, replicate in a very, very small way what, what happened in 37 and 53. And, and I also think there's going to be a little bit, hopefully, of um, learning a little bit about this, uh, this work for the next one, because maybe there'll be another one um, not too far off in the mm -hmm. distance. Um, but I, if if okay, um, I would love to open it up and just hear what people's thoughts are, what your experiences are. Uh, with um, with the planning of the coronation, maybe even what you're what what you're planning to do, um, and, and how you're thinking about this. Don't be shy. Oh, Jane. Jane, you're on mute. If I just you're still on mute. Still on mute. Ah. Yeah, okay. Um, I was quite surprised um, at the beginning when you said how uh, even in recent years uh, there had been a lack of interest um, because uh, last year at the Jubilee round here, certainly in our road, we had a huge event and everybody became involved. Um, I became involved. I ended up having to cut ribbons as I'm the oldest person in the street. Um, and you know, I actually had to be the queen, which was, well, I decided that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we had bunting, flags, we had everything. We did the whole thing. As we had for the previous Jubilee, but in that case, I think we got a lot of people on side because as somebody mentioned earlier, we combined it with the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So it became an Olympic street party as well. Whereas obviously last year it was just um, for the Queen. This year, nothing. And I have found that very strange. I mean, it's not up to me now to organize things, but I, I have been surprised by the lack of response. Um, and somebody just yesterday sent a message out on the, on the road, WhatsApp, um, they got some bunting, did anybody want it? And I thought, you know, by this time before, we'd all be out there. We'd all have started. It, it was really big. And I, I'm not sure what is happening. When I think of who is responding, my sister-in-law who lives in Knoxville, they are having an <laughs> coronation tea party. But then in Knoxville, they seem to celebrate absolutely everything. Yeah, is this the American way? I don't know. But Every weekend, she's got an Irish thing or a, and a, just something every weekend. But they are having the full thing with the china, the cakes, the lot. Um, an American friend of mine, not an introvert, definitely, <laughs> is, has come over for the coronation. Uh, very keen for me to queue up with her all night on the mall. No, not <laughs> doing that. But I have agreed to go to Hampton Court with her tomorrow. So, I, you know, but she is so enthusiastic and I think is going to be disappointed that everywhere isn't a mass of flags and, and, and celebrations. Mm -hmm. uh, and my own celebration will be because... Um, at Hampton Court at the chapel, they are having a special service and afterwards we're having a, a lunch, which, you know, it, it, the equivalent, but there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I, like you, I am mystified. I expected more. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So. And, 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 I, and I think underneath that, I, my wonder, I wonder um, if it's, some of it's not, you know, Charles's wish that everything will be streamlined and all of that, or if it's, you know, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is, but I know the American component of this is, is um, drives a lot of what's, what's going on, I think, over here. And of course, that's always, isn't that always the argument for royalty, is the tourist, right? It's that there's tourist value to it, and it's the mm -hmm. Americans driving it or, or, or elsewhere. Thank you for that, Jane. I wonder if others have some thoughts or observations. Fiona's got hand up. 
Yeah, could I, I just it, it, to respond, Jane, I think that's really fascinating what you're saying there. Um, and as an aside, I was in London last Wednesday and the only thing I could see, and I was in Westminster, the only thing I could see was um, some grandstands that had been put up outside the Abbey. There was no other um, recognition of what was about to happen, you know, within a week. But I just, I wonder if, that, so just before the Queen died, um, we issued a directive to include in the book. And in that we asked people about the future of the monarchy. And interestingly, everyone must have assumed that the Queen was going to, this is a spoiler, that the <laughs> Queen was going to live forever, or at least for another 10 years, because everyone was saying, well, when, when she dies, monarchy won't continue. Charles will never be king. And within, you know, a week or so, obviously, they were proved wrong. But interestingly, what a lot of people also were talking about was this slimmed down version of the monarchy, the sort of the Dutch or the Swedish version of the monarchy. And I do wonder if the this whole kind of slimmed down coronation that's going on is an acknowledgement that that is the only space there is these days in, in British society for monarchy. Um, and it's a kind of a, a recognition that's come with Charles of, you know, it's going to be a 22 minute, not a 45 minute procession. It's going to be a mile and a half, not five miles. It's um, the thing that really made me laugh. But it shouldn't make me laugh. It was great. But it was about reusing the throne. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> And this, that was the big news. It wasn't about, the, you know, the massive preparations or the pomp and the ceremony. It was about, we're going to make use of George the, George the Sixth or George the Fifth's throne and kind of, you know, we've re, re-tapestried it. Um, and I thought, again, just fascinating in terms of the preparation, that that's the scale that we're talking about. Sorry, I shall stop now. Yeah. Suzanne? Sorry, my um, digital hand won't work, so this one I'll have to do. Um, <laughs> So I was invited up to London with you, with your good selves, but um, declined because I, in my other part of my life, I'm a registrar of marriage. So I'm busy marrying people this weekend. And um, we had to, when the date came out, we had to alert all the couples that had booked their weddings that obviously they were going to clash with the coronation. And we wanted to kind of give them the chance to kind of move their wedding date if they didn't want to get married on the coronation weekend or if that would cause them problems. And interestingly enough, we had some that decided that they didn't want to get married because either I, I'm guessing they would not want to be impacted by the, you know, bank holidays or whatever else was going on. And we had some that decided, so we've got about a dozen weddings this weekend. Um, but I was just really curious to kind of see, you know, what other kind of impact the kind of change of the monarch might have on our on our registrar service, because we also offer um, citizenship ceremonies. And obviously now we're having to kind of do those, obviously, for people to get their citizenship and um, and give their oaths before the king and I was looking in the cost so we my last citizenship ceremony was the last one in East Sussex with the queen when she was alive that was the last one I did colleagues have done some since for the king um but we have to bring out a portrait and we have to hang up some bunting and we have to put on a cd of the um the um uh and national anthem and we have to you know it's a, it's a very formal um ceremony um, but we haven't yet got our new portrait of the king for the regist registry office. So, and apparently the cost of providing all the new portraits for all of the local authority buildings and all the places that require them is going to be eight million pounds to the taxpayer. So I was thinking, even though there's this slim down sort of, you know, sort of coronation plans and all of these other things, there's all these other costs that are kind of going to, you know, make real impact on, on you know, on us and on, you know, the sort of wider and cost of living crisis that you know I think that people quite rightly have concerns about and it's just really really interesting that you know because we were thinking we could just print off a picture and put that in the frame that we've already got for the queen but no we've got to wait till we get the official picture so that it's all official um and um yeah it's kind of yeah it's interesting probably want to make sure it's not a meme from McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Yeah, that's it's all really interesting what people are, are saying. And um until about a week ago, actually, um, I suddenly realized that I didn't even know exactly what date the coronation was going to be on. And I had to, I mean, I knew it was coming up, but I mean it was indicative of the of the lack of of um kind of coverage that um I couldn't even remember what the 
what the date was and it, 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 it it's kind of listening to what everybody's had to say sort of kind of confirms to me the the idea that last year we had the the platinum jubilee and then the um obviously the the death and the funeral of the of, of the queen and that was a huge thing not necessarily because of the status of of, of i don't know how much that tells us about the status of royalty put that way i'll leave that to 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 those of you writing <laughs> right writing on that but i think it, it sort of it sort of suggests that a lot of people that was kind of history history in the making because the queen had always uh been there obviously as much uh about, as much for me as 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 for anyone one else and that was the end of that and i think you know that whatever one's attitude anybody's attitude to the monarchy is that was a kind of significant kind of moment so i totally get why people you know wanted to go to Balmoral or what you know wherever at what stage of the kind of funeral the, the kind of um procession went went through and did that uh and then it seems to be that everybody's kind of I don't know if everybody's just turned off after that point and I also don't know if there's a kind of assumption somewhere that people would just be more enthusiastic than they have turned out to be because I'm guessing in in um, 1953, I don't think they had to whip up enthusi enthusiasm. I think it, you know, it. Um, so that the kind of narrative we've had is that is exactly, yeah, these little items of things. Oh, well, we're saving a bit of money on this. We're saving a bit of money on that. We're kind of shrinking it down a bit. Is is, is entirely to try and sort of fit it to the, to to the kind of current um, economic situation without really thinking about the um the kind of symbolic role i think necessarily in the same ways that they did in in in, in 53 and 37 i mean i'm tempted to say although I'm, I'm that exactly that discussion of, of 37 versus 53 make, makes me think that 1953 was a more socially conservative period actually than 1937 1937 you know and it in some ways, it's actually closer. I think we're closer now to how things were in 1937 than we are to 1953. Uh, weird though that 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 might seem, and that the war, um, although it was progressive economically and created a more social society, we actually sort of kind of culturally created a much more conservative society in in that same kind of kind of movement i mean at the time somebody said uh, there's a famous quote i can't now remember who said it but the, you know the greatest restitution of uh of the of the um um the social order ever you know it's like the uh, as, as a result of that so the society was more kind of conservative in 1953 and it there was a kind of natural interest also in having a new young young queen whereas you know obviously charles is not particularly new or young or in interesting in some ways and, and <laughs> the royal family is problematic in 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 many ways so I think it's that that kind of and that kind of realization is uh, I think suddenly hitting people round about now just listening to that I was thinking yeah I've been thinking exactly the same things over the last few days gone from thinking mm, there's a there's a vaguely being aware there's a coronation to actually f finding out when the exact date was to thinking Mm, this is actually quite significant because you know it's the first one since 1953 so then thinking through the kind of thoughts that that, that that you know people have been saying here so that's really interesting to to listen to the only other quick thing i want to say is that um and also because i live in aberystwyth i mean there's literally nothing here there was nothing during the platinum jubilee there was nothing um in the diamond jubilee oh i mean okay there was one house nearby that had some small bunting um but you don't tend to see um any celebration of royal events whatsoever um Keradigi and the county there have been no applications to hold street parties um whatsoever so um and I'm guessing that's probably also the case for Gwyneth uh kind of further up the coast coast from us this kind of the kind of Welsh-speaking area of Wales I mean it's just not it's not a, a royal um, supporting, and it's not that people won't do it because for the the national Eisteddfod last year they had there was bunting on every town in Ceredigion, and outside houses and huge welcome signs and everything. So it's 
uh, people around here celebrate different things than, 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 than the monarchy. So um, in some ways, it's difficult for me to actually monitor the changing conditions across the rest of the UK because I don't necessarily so, no, don't necessarily see it. But it's interesting to to get the kind of um, the bird's eye view of, of of Lewis, you know, kind of coming, <laughs> coming in and what shops, shops are in. That that that's quite that's quite fascinating. So thanks for that. Thanks, well, I, I was going to ask Roger if they were getting anything in South Wales. Myself. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. I've been thinking a lot of sort of scanning my mind's eye for kind of like the local area and thinking about what I've seen. I haven't seen an awful lot. I mean, uh, you know, and it was interesting um, you know, hearing everything that's been said. And, um, you know, I've had this conversation with, with Jen in the past and I think this topic in particular, once you start thinking about it, it's amazing how many different sort of uh, lines of thought get, you know, you, that sort of start firing off in your own mind. And I mean, one of the things that got mentioned earlier, it got me thinking, my daughter's uh, turning seven in December and, you know, she's got a, a party and school coronation party. And it feels like the school community, at least in my experience, kind of, you know, we live in like a nice, sort of uh, suburb of Cardiff here, just the north of the city centre, um, you know, sort of like Nick was saying, maybe not quite so much as Aberystwyth, but you know, <laughs> you know big Welsh nationalist kind of uh, feel to parts of the city, this part of the city, you know, lots of Welsh speakers, relatively speaking, compared to, you know, other parts of, of South Wales in particular. Um, so there's a real strong national, Welsh national identity, which kind of is often at odds with the monarchy you know a, a lot of the time and you know we had a lot of the stuff to do with sort of you know not my prince and all this kind of thing when uh, the prince of wales um you know sort of was handed over and that kind of thing so there's a lot of that sort of feeling i think you know not really acrimonious but it's, it's kind of it's under the surface in a lot of places but interestingly yeah like my, my daughter goes to an english speaking primary school they're going to have a coronation party. There's a lot of chat, you know, in the in the weeks leading up to kind of, you know, this week now they're having, you know, sort of a lot of the exercises and, you know, art they do in class and all that kind of thing is kind of going to be sort of monarchy, royalty orientated. And it's got her asking me all sorts of questions that I don't really even know my own views <laughs> on, you know, about sort of, you know, lineage and why I think it's unfair that this person would become king or this person wouldn't. All those kinds of questions that a six-year-old manages to frame things for you in a way that you know you really haven't asked yourself in a long time and i think it's really interesting that you know, you've got that demographic of children that that particular mm. pocket that age category where they're being encouraged to kind of ask themselves and ask and ask their parents all sorts of questions about kind of like why do we celebrate this what you know what is this you know in relation to our country what is a country you know all these sorts of questions that you know um, depending on if you happen to be at school when you're having a coronation or something major like this, I think these may be questions that they're asking that kids 10 years older than them went through their entire school lives without ever really asking themselves as a as their kind of views and ideas on things are being formed. So it's which I think is incredible, really, when you think about how much that kind of lottery of historical events almost can impact how much you do or don't think about something from a young age. So that, that's kind of the thing that's got me um, got me thinking at the moment anyway. Yeah, and I think um, looking through the 53 material, there's a whole subset of children's essays in the 53 mm -hmm. material, yeah. which sadly did not make it into the book. But um, you see this curriculum that's, that's going on um, in early grades about what all of the regalia means and the history of the monarchy and all of that. And, and like you said, Rodri, just sort of this um, attempt to sort of situate yourself within, uh, as a child, within the nation, but also within this long line of history, um, which of course is probably regenerates uh, over and over and over generationally um, that institution over and over and over again. And it's 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 an interesting process, I think, that goes on. And it depends on what, where you are and what age, what age you are, as you said, um, which is really fascinating. Um, I'm curious though, too, since both Nick and Roger, um, you know, you were talking about being in Wales, and um because Charles was invested, mm -hmm. you know, does that do you think that, you know, with not my prince kind of um commentary do you think that that actually is an, you know sort of another 
uh, another twist of the knife, um, so to say, the Welsh nationalism that here, you know, he was invested and then um, now he's the king. Does that, do you see anything about that in particular in that link? Um, I think there's, um, I mean, there's an ongoing, there's an ongoing um, kind of resentment and memory of that, which is kind of bound up with other things. I think the, the, one of the recent um, instances of that was the name renaming of the Seven Crossing, the Prince of Wales bridge, which happened very sort of mysteriously, almost overnight, and there was this kind of kind of this. <laughs> horrible big sign over the top of it saying which just seems you know slightly um that is gonna uh uh rub people up the the wrong way and it's interesting what's happening with the the the, the prince of wales thing because that was almost the first i think official um procl proclamation of charles on becoming king was that um william is going to become the prin prin prince of wales and that's which is not how it happened in his case. I mean, he wasn't even, um, you know, he wasn't declared the Prince of Wales until some years after the coronation, uh, after after Elizabeth's accession to the throne, late, much later in the 50s, I think. And then obviously the actual investiture was until the end of the 60s. Um, um, so this is being, I mean, although it's been set up because William was, uh, did, um, uh, service in wales and was kind of flying uh, rescue helicopters and, and stuff like that that has been there's a clear i think attempt to try and sort of rush that through before you know sort of kind of opposition can can, can kind of arise to that but i mean it's, it's also it's not uh, you know it's it's not that i mean people are not acrimonious or kind of uh you know in that in, in that uh, or that's limited to bit, bit areas of social media i think there's more a question of people are, are just you know are not a lot of people just doesn't impinge on their lives and they're not particularly interested whereas but i think that might lead to more opposition if there is uh a, i think they have announced something about the investiture isn't it isn't the idea that it's going to be in cardiff i think rather than some big thing in 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 Carnarvon um but um I think that will be a much more low-key event <laughs> than the one in it one in the 60s world because they will be uh you know there there will be protests and 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 kind of organized sort of dissent against that so um yeah it'll be interesting to see exactly how that how that happens great anyone else Uh, Ellie. Hi, um, it's like a slight tangent, but I was so a couple of years ago, I was teaching on a module at Sussex um, and we had a week on public mourning and we looked at the plans for what would happen when the Queen died. And it was a group of um, second year students, so they would have been like 19 ish. And I found it really interesting. And it's I've been thinking back on that seminar with all like the coronation things that are happening because I was asking if any of them were like interested or had any kind of like any interest at all in royalty and monarchy in the UK and they were like no but we love the crown like <laughs> <laughs> every single one of my students like and they were quite a mixed bag as well like they all loved the crown um but then when we talked about like looked at the kind of like morning rituals for when the queen was going to die like one quote that really stuck with me was a student being like oh well like it's sad that an old lady's died but it's not my problem <laughs> and like <laughs> and like it's just really stuck with me this kind of like uh feeling of like humanizing it but also it like this sense of it being forced upon them and that kind of like grappling with like the there being real people behind the crown but not knowing what their actual relationship to that is um and the crown being like this big shiny netflix show that they enjoy watching but couldn't then kind of think about how it filtered into their own life and the ways that that manifested itself <laughs> like um 
and I so I was kind because of, I was really shocked that they all liked it so much so I wondered if maybe there might be this sudden surge of like patriotic feeling from like a, a young Netflix audience because mm-hmm. they might feel like they had the mm-hmm. relationships to these people and especially given the timeline of the show at the moment where it's like Charles and Camilla are just like getting a more of a plot <laughs> um if they might feel like they had some kind of relationship to that or not um but yeah that's a bit of a tangent but it's something that has been wearing away in the back of my brain because I thought there might be more happening than there was I've also been surprised that I've not seen more coronation things than I have I've been subjecting Jen to um, my constant patrolling of Twitter (laughs) (laughs) and uh, we discovered some uh, yesterday Princess Diana started to trend or the day before Mm. and uh, people have started replacing their profile pictures with pictures of Diana and um, that sort of the usual commentary in the Twitter is like, obviously, because Charles and Camilla murdered Diana, she is the true queen. Um, and it should be, she's, you know, the queen of our hearts. And then we looked at the sort of the geography of where these tweets were coming from, and they were all American. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a great, a huge group of them from South Florida, which was really interesting oh, to, it was I didn't tell you that part <laughs> um, but sort of this whole conspiracy of I mean well obviously Charles and Camilla murdered Diana and she is the rightful queen I was like this is a myth sort of the 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 interest that I have in terms of the way that people are interpreting like this is a whole different conspiracy mm-hmm. tangent that I hadn't even thought of mm-hmm. in terms of responses to the coronation but you know all mm-hmm. these texts too I mean there's so much space for criticism too and mm-hmm. also this sort of um parasocial relationship that happens between like what Ellie was talking about with these texts like the crown Mm -hmm. um and relating to them to the royal family in much different ways I think than than had been that had had been done before and of course the Americans getting in on it and everybody else really getting in on it too just sort of um creates a a lot of a lot of noise and and a lot of um yeah I'm, I'm still sort of uh, I'm still trying to make sense of that, but now that I know that those Twitter accounts are coming from South Florida, I'm like, well, I'm yeah, totally. There's a lot going on. Yeah, Roger, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I think just one further thought that you know sort of came to mind then, just thinking about the uh, the crown and and um, you know speaking about maybe why there's some of the factors obviously that go into this sort of slightly more subdued sense around the nation that maybe you know you, you guys were expecting coming off the plane. I mean, I don't think. You could kind of underestimate. I don't think we mentioned it yet. Really, the kind of the Harry and Meghan kind of <laughs> drama in real in real time in real life that that's kind of dragged on and and just kind of like I think this sort of the um, you know in the, sort of in and around and after the, the Queen passing away. I think there's just like a lot of sort of um, you know that that's created a lot of tiredness you know I think there's peaks and troughs isn't there with enthusiasm around the monarchy and that kind of thing but I think that's definitely had a drag factor on the whole thing even though you know you know um, you could argue that um, you know uh, Charles on the other side of the fence to Harry probably comes off looking better than he does in a lot of a lot of situations but uh, which is isn't always the case but I think you know that has had an impact and i think that you know even if it's just like a latent one that that's probably you know sapped a bit a bit more energy from a from a country that's already pretty low on energy for various reasons and you know for the cost if nothing else uh so yeah i think that's been a um been a big thing as well yeah anybody if anybody finds out that i'm doing any of this work at home it's always harry and megan <laughs> and then they're surprised that i don't like follow that I like I'm not into the soap opera of of the of the royalty I'm more into how people engage with it and but that's definitely the American um Mm. as well is that Harry Harry and Meghan and the drama of it and um, I think Americans view this as a much more celebrity text Mm -hmm. I think we see royals as celebrities in ways that I don't think um I don't think Brits uh, Mm. engage with them in in you all engage with them in a much more complex way than than the Americans do um, but I am going back to what Nick said, which which I think is is um, is interesting to think about with Charles is the connection between thirty seven and today because I've always I've always thought we're living in the thirties anyway right now 
And so it makes sense that that there would be that connection. Um, but you know, when you think about George VI, he nobody really expected him to be king. There was a lot of this sort of um, anger around the fact that Edward wasn't going to become king. And and there's also underneath some of the some of the observers' account is, and this is in 53 too, to a lesser extent, but it's still there, is this fear that something's going to happen and something maybe would change, or maybe a fear or maybe an expectation that on coronation day something's going to happen. Um, and and I and there's this kind of this um um there's less excitement in 37 for sure in 53. Um, but I think it's because he was never expected to be king. And and I think looking at some of the material that Fiona um ha had told me about, um, and also looking at some of the um YouGov material that goes back um and some of the Ipsos Mori stuff that goes back um at least to 2005 and earlier. In 2005, with the wedding of uh, Charles and Camilla, is the highest um, is the highest Republican sentiment in this country, um, and this sense that Charles should never become king. It's great if Charles and Camilla want to be together, and that's fine, but that's not king material. And so, I, and I wonder if that's not part of this: is that there was this sort of expectation that maybe we would skip Charles for William, um, and that that notion that he's really not the king that people want at this moment. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious if that's sort of part of this lack of interest, although it doesn't help with Sunak and trusts and mm -hmm. making a mess of everything. So mm -hmm. it's another thought. Anybody else want to weigh in? Oh, <laughs> yes, please. I was really interested actually when we were talking about um, the, was it the Diamond Jubilee in 2000 in around the Olympics and whatever mm. we're talking about the impact of other events and stuff like that we haven't really mentioned COVID and I think definitely on my, certainly on my road um, where I live in Kent um, we've become a lot closer as a kind of like a little mini community post-COVID where I think that like it sort of forced you to speak to your neighbours a little bit more and you know to maybe do all these more communal things and so we did do the Diamond Jubilee last year and we're doing something very similar for the coronation this year yeah. But only I, like there's been a lot of positioning, I think, about, you know, that it's not really a, a monarchist sentiment in the road. And there's been a lot like, I mean, there's one house that's not getting involved at all because they're very Republican. Yeah. It's fine. But then the rest of us are sort of marketing it very much as it's an opportunity to drink as much pims as we possibly can. <laughs> um, and I think it's one of these things where, like, yeah, I think that these celebrations, certainly in my road, are so much more to do with a post-COVID community mm. sustenance mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. they are to do. It's, it's, yeah. it's just an excuse in some ways. And mm -hmm. I think it's, that make, makes me see other roads that haven't still yeah. got that community continuing on. They're not doing anything around it. Mm -hmm. And I just think those are quite, some quite interesting kind of trying to grapple with an ap perhaps an apathy about the monarchy with a kind of continued desire to want to do the things mm -hmm to still kind of use these opportunities to bind together as communities, but not really being interested in the actual thing itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's some really interesting. Interesting point. Yeah. Would you... No, go, you go, Fiona, if you were. Would you want to come in first? Oh, yeah, I was, I was just going to say, I think just into that, that goes back to that idea of community and what people experience as community or not. Um, and um and, and as you were saying that about pims you reminded me that i need to get some pims for the barbecue that i'm having on sunday <laughs> because every year the same group of friends always get together and find something royal to celebrate even though none of us are royalists but it's our excuse to get together mm. just as an aside sorry i was i was telling um lucy and jen this last night i've inadvertently been granted a road closure for my street <laughs> To have a street party for the coronation and i say inadvertently because all i did was send an inquiry after a, <laughs> a, a slightly inebriated conversation with a neighbor and i think the uh, the town that i live in are so desperate for people to have these road closures that they've granted me one without even having to go through the application process or proving that anyone else in the, the road wants it closed <laughs> so if anyone wants a party i'll be on my own <laughs> on my closed road <laughs> It would be very interesting to see what the numbers of road closures that have been granted is and actually how many have been taken up. Because, of course, now I'm I'm upholding that statistic, even though I have no intention of having a road closure <laughs> or a party for it. So but anyway, 
Thank you. I think we just said this, you know, what you were saying is, and, and Fiona too, because Fiona's, um, Fiona's get together goes back to William and Kate's wedding, right? Um, and there's that notion of street parties and all of this about being social social gatherings that aren't necessarily tied to the monarchy, but are much more about, you know, maybe something else like community and social space and things like that. Um, and, and the ways in which we look at images of 37 and 53 and see street parties and just imagine that they're monarchist events and 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 the likelihood mm, is, is, yeah. is they're mm. they're much just more moments complicated. of community yeah they're much more complicated than than we give them credit for mm. Mm. okay um there is one place where they do seem to be celebrating and that's on the archers um everyday story of country folk and they are pushing it there so whether the bbc has been given a directive but they are they're certainly pushing it and there's a lot of talk about a great historical event and we've all got to set you know and i'm thinking where's this come from but anyway the art is <laughs> celebrating that's so true, Jane, and it and it has. You're right because Jessica and I had a conversation with the BBC a few weeks back, and uh, so you just wait for uh, Doctor Who in the autumn and <laughs> and, and Eurovision. Spoiler <laughs> alert! Yeah, but yes, wow. because we were saying that about the Eurovision, it's come through on. Uh, we've got lots of Archers bands here, and uh, yeah, the the Eurovision's coming through too. So. Yeah, it infiltrates. Yeah, it's not just about farming hints and no, no, no. But it is this institution, right? Like sort of the media is part of the institution of 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 continuation and um and participating in that the way that that the newspapers have and the um and the BBC have for you know for as long as they've been around since twenty two. Um, and then what fascinated me with the Queen's um with the Queen's death and this is what Ellie said you know that there's been there's been preparations. I, I mean, I know it was, a, what was it? The London Bridge. London Bridge. Yeah, you know, there's London been Bridge. preparations. Uh, apparently they do this for American presidents too. Um, there's a whole, you know, there's behind the scenes of what would happen um, in the event. And, um, uh, but what struck me was there was, there was never a moment of questioning. So the queen dies and boom, everything, everything bends towards Charles. And, and 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 I think that's so important um, in in terms of the life of an institution and the continuation of a continue of a of an institution like the monarchy, um, and that's where I get interested in in these conversations of down with the monarchy, not my king, um, and and republicanism. And the mass observation material always sort of suggests to me that those people in the middle who are neither republican. Or, or who are Republican, or those who are super um, monarchist, it's the people in the middle. And the minute those those people begin to shift one way or the other, that's that's when they're if they shift more Republican or more apathetic, then I think then then you've got problems. But it's that machine of the institution which is so fascinating, watching how it it, it just works in 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 terms of its continuation. Mm -hmm. Anyone else, really? Well, I will be very interested to hear what everyone's what, what everyone finds out and what everyone gets up to. If you're on the call and in, 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 on, on today, or if you've got any um, friends or relations, um, please go out and and observe. Um, we're not mm. we're not looking for you know rah rah monarchy although if you've got rah rah monarchy that's good too that's good yeah. as well i mean i think um i think that's the power of mass observation is to really get that sense of diversity of feeling and experience and um so um so go off and observe away and 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 contact us um on the back side yeah please get in touch we've got um we'll have uh social media going over over the weekend as well so we send any any pictures tag uh tag us in to especially like Instagram, Twitter, uh, but send them in and there's no deadline on anything. So uh, just, uh, yeah, keep observing that bunting. What's going on? <laughs> so let's see how many houses up the street get it. <laughs> it's 
been great. But thanks, everyone. And um, we'll keep you posted on how we get on. But thanks for a lovely session. Yeah. <laughs>